every freaking job you have, even if it's your dream job, even if it's something that you're passionate about, there's going to be a time where you're going to resent it. Guaranteed. There's no way you're going to love what you do all the time, every single day. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I do door-to-door -door sales selling solar panel systems, and I don't fuck with it. <laughs> I'm only doing this for the money, and I'm having a hard time focusing on the job and staying consistent because my true soul goal is to start a record label so I can create opportunities for my own music and for my friends without big business people interfering with the artist's creative process. My mind and heart are always on creating music or creating art because I'm an artist as well. Doing door-to-door -door sales doesn't align with my strengths nor my vision, but it'll get me money so I can get started with my label. Should I force this job into alignment because of the money it'll bring me, or should I say fuck it and try to start a label by only focusing on the label? The reason why I ask is because you mentioned that a soul goal is kind of blurry, meaning the path to achieve it is usually unknown or uncertain versus a troll goal, which is predictable. If I stay with this job, I know for sure I'll make money to start the label. However, I don't like this job. On the other hand, if I leave the job and focus on making the money and musical connections, I have literally no clue how to start the label. <laughs> this excites me because it's unknown and I know it's my sole goal. So is me working here in a place just for the money uh, and that is in alignment with my personality, a troll goal, or is it actually in alignment? I'm missing something. Thanks. So. I remember listening to an audio book many years ago called Lead the Field uh, by, um, what was the guy, Nightingale, Earl Nightingale. It's probably free. I think you'll find it for free on YouTube now, Lead the Field. And he talks about how to be a master in your field, how to be the best at what you do. And he goes on to describe uh, a situation with a woman who says that she wants to be a poet. Right. And he asked the woman, oh, OK, so how many uh, poetry courses have you taken? And the woman says none. And he says, OK, well, how many poetry books do you have? And she said none. And he said, OK, uh, ha have you been have you been practicing your poetry? Have you done anything in the realm of poetry? And she said no. And so he says to her, well, then yours is just a pipe dream. You really don't want to be a poet. That's something that you came up with that you actually don't really intend to pursue otherwise you'd be reading the books you'd be studying the courses you'd be practicing you'd be doing all the things that are about that by mere virtue of you telling me that you have literally no clue how to start a label means you really haven't done your due diligence you really haven't put pen to paper boots to the ground in order to get that ball rolling otherwise you would have been spending all your off time trying to develop that and I believe that that will be the best route for you. The best route for you would be to keep doing what you're doing, right? Do your job and, and have a good attitude about your job because it's a means to an end. You're doing the job so that you can have the money. There's nothing wrong with that. I think a lot of people get this confused. There's nothing wrong with doing a job so that you can have the money. My dad has been fixing cars for the past 40 years. Never complain a day in his life because he says that it's his job to just get up and do what he has to do. You just get up and do what you have to do. And this is, look, bro, even if you do start a record label, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to start your record label and there's going to be a day that you don't want to do it. I watched a presentation with, uh, with John Somez once and he was talking about how even his friend who was a pornography star, he met this guy that was in porno. He gets up every day and he porks chicks. And he asked him, he's like, there are days that you get up and you resent your job, you don't want to do it. And even that guy said, yeah, of course, there are days I don't want to do it. There's a lot of times that I just would rather not do this. Every freaking job you have, even if it's your dream job, even if it's something that you're passionate about, there's going to be a time where you're going to resent it. Guaranteed. There's no way you're going to love what you do all the time, every single day, every hour of the day. So you have to start to practice now to do what you have to do, whether you feel like it or not. It is better that you take this job and continue to do this job that's not a job that you think that you're going to do for the rest of your life, that it's a job that you're not necessarily passionate about, and start practicing the right attitude about getting up and doing your work, because guaranteed, 
When you start that record label, there's gonna be shit you don't wanna do. And this is why most businesses fail. Most businesses fail because business people start it and they have no accountability to no one. When you have accountability to someone, you get up and do it. You have accountability to your boss right now. You have accountability to the sales manager right now. You have accountability to your customers right now. So guess what? When you have accountability, you get up and do it. But if you start your own thing and you have no accountability to nobody, you ain't gonna do it because you're gonna get bored, you're gonna have feelings, you're gonna change your mind, you're gonna get hit a roadblock, and there's not gonna be anybody there breathing down your neck telling you, hey, do it anyway. So it's a good way to practice that form of detachment. You gotta be detached, and detached doesn't mean ap apathetic. That's a big difference too you gotta recognize. Detached doesn't mean apathetic. Detached means I'm gonna do it with a good attitude, but I'm not needy about it, or I'm not angry about it, or I have no feelings about it. You don't need to have feelings about things. Not everything that you do, you need to have a good feeling about, right? And it, and it damn sure don't serve you to have a bad attitude about the things that, you, that are blessings in your life. And I'm telling you right now, this job is a blessing for you right now. Do your job, do it well, make that money, and stop slap dicking around with your soul goal. If you're to be a music, producer, then you should know what that looks like, how that's gonna happen, how that's gonna unfold. You should really actually start putting the things in place. You should be making the connections. I guarantee you don't work 24 hours a day. What are you doing on those other hours of the day? It's those other hours of the day that you start to get the ball rolling, start building momentum for that soul goal. But just like Earl Nightingale said to that woman who says she, was, she wanted to do poetry, but she actually never did anything associated with poetry, you might just be circle jerking, just playing with yourself, slap dicking around, right? Do your job, do your work, be grateful, and on, on the side, right? Nobody likes to hear this too, especially because I used to say, just jump right in with two feet. You know why I don't tell people to jump in with two feet anymore? I used to tell people, jump in with two feet, right? I used to tell people, take, take dangerous action. I know some of my most popular videos, it's me saying that, right? Just quit the job and jump in. You know why I don't say that anymore? Because y'all ain't me. I've watched so many people that I've tried to project my attitude on, project my mindset on, project my energy on, hoping and thinking and wishing that they could do it, and it can't. Not everybody can do it. You have to be all day, all night, with that thing in your mind. Every dollar that you make from every client that you close when you knock knocking door to door, you should be thinking about how that money is gonna go towards buying more equipment, studying more about the music, learning more about the industry, right? It's a means to an end. And you gotta be grateful for the means. You gotta be grateful for the means if you're ever gonna reach the end. And so that's it, my man. That's my opinion on that. Don't make any big jump. You don't need to make a big jump. Most people that make big jumps, and I'm speaking for myself included, right? And a lot of times I jump, and it's the grace of God that gets me going, keeps me going. A lot of times we make, we make these uh, decisions emotionally, right? Oh, I'm just angry. I hate this job. I don't want to get up. I don't want to do it. Effeminate. Just being effeminate. Get up and do it because you're supposed to do it. And like I said, by and by, that is gonna help strengthen your resolve for when you really need it for your own business. And I'm telling you this from a man with experience. I've destroyed lots of parts of my business because I was still being effeminate. I was thinking the way you thinking. And even though you know, I think about it sometimes, and of course, I'm not trying to change my life in retrospect, but even me quitting YouTube back in 2015, I'm like, well, that was so dumb. I was in a mood. I was literally in a mood and I did that. And then it just cascaded a whole domino effect downhill for me. Right? Don't make emotional decisions. And a lot of times when it comes to our work, we're making emotional decisions. Be rational about it. Be rational about it. This is just coming from an OG, from OG warrior. I got a warrior mindset just like you guys, right? Slash and burn. You could do that. But if you're a slasher and burner, you also have to be a ass buster, hard worker. And that's why I say a lot of people, they don't have what it takes, right? You gotta kind of snowball your way into it, right? 
And maybe that's you. Maybe you're, maybe you're the type that can slash and burn. Maybe you're the type that can slash his job, burn it up, and you just, just rise up to the top. 90% ain't that way, right? So you got to decide for yourself, really. This is just my opinion, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.